Hello, this is Turtle Hiker again, and I thought today we'd talk a little bit about how to reduce our impact on the environment. But instead of looking at me while I'm talking, I thought you could watch a few videos of why we would want to reduce our impact and the things that are at stake if we don't. One of the things I can remember hearing growing up and learning to be out camping and hiking and picnicking and things like that was my dad would say take only pictures leave only footprints and that leads to two of the things we're going to talk about the first one being take only pictures i know when you're out hiking or camping or how, whatever it is you do to enjoy the outdoors you think it's one rock it's one flower, what difference does it really make? Nobody will ever miss that. And in a way, that's true. But if you think about the fact that 10 million plus people visit the more popular national parks like Zion, Yellowstone, the Great Smoky Mountains, if each one of those per people took a rock or a flower or any kind of plant, it wouldn't be long before there wasn't anything left. So even if it seems like a small, minuscule thing, all added up, it's not. And if that one thing you took might have been food or shelter for a small animal, then even your one makes a difference. And leave only footprints is kind of a two-sided thing. I think it speaks to the idea of don't take things into the woods and leave them behind. The, the idea of pack it in, pack it out. Whatever it is that you bring in with you, take it back out. But at the same time, we need to be careful about our footprints and where we leave them. The forest floor is a delicate ecosystem, or the desert for that matter is even in a lot of ways a more delicate ecosystem. There are often things going on just below the surface of the ground that you don't understand, that you can't see. So stay to the path. The trail is there, it's already a space that is for our use, that is no longer a part of the forest floor ecosystem or the desert ecosystem. But when you go off trail, you can do things you don't intend. Like, you, you step on small plants, you don't think much about that. But sometimes those delicate plants, your footsteps could kill them. And if it's a plant that has a hard time making their way in the world, then that's a big deal. If you go places like Yellowstone, you and you get off the boardwalks and paths, you can damage the algae pads, which are part of a whole ecosystem in themselves besides the fact that they are what makes so many of those pools and springs beautiful because that's where they get their color and so if we damage those in some way then we have damaged the beauty of the park getting off in areas in the desert that um, have been set aside to try to help the natural plants and things grow can be very damaging to them. They have very short growing times and are very delicate because they have such a harsh environment to live in. So be careful where you leave your footprints or try not to leave footprints at all. If you walk on things that are like rocks or gravel hard packed dirt, things that won't make a footprint, those are usually areas that are better to walk on. 
because they're not going to have delicate life forms trying to grow there. And back to the idea of pack it in, pack it out. Lots of people understand that in a sense of saying, I pack my lunch and it's in a plastic wrapper. I'm going to put the plastic wrapper back in my pack and carry it out with me. What people don't always understand is that also refers to what happens to you after you eat your lunch. If you need to leave, dispose your body of human waste, be careful how you do that as well. You can dig a hole six inches deep, put it in there, bury it. That's okay. Be careful. Try to do it in such a way that you're not digging up plants and things like that um, to dig your cat hole with. And always make sure that you don't do it near water. And if you're somewhere, say, in the desert or in a rocky environment, such as the, the southwest where you might be out where it's impossible to dig a hole then you need to plan ahead and come prepared to pack that out and you can there are special products you can order to do that um, but whatever works for you you need to have a system a way that you bring that back out with you and ladies that goes for you and feminine products too and toilet paper even if you're digging a cat hole you shouldn't leave toilet paper in your cat hole because it doesn't biodegrade easily so that you need to pack out Some places you go may have uh, latrines or pit toilets, and that's great. But if you don't, you need to take care of it properly. And try not to pee on plants. If you think about the fact that if you've got a dog that likes to pee in the yard, and especially if he's got one spot he really likes, he kills the grass, people can do the same thing. So especially on heavily trafficked trails or around campsites, that can become a problem. So whenever you can, pee in leaf litter or um, under pine trees where the needles have built up or on rocky soil. And once again, make sure you stay about 70 paces away from a water source. Which then also leads us to, if you're backpacking and you have dishes and you have to wash them, how do you do it? Try to use an eco-friendly soap. But even with the best eco-friendly soap, don't wash them in the creek, stream, or water source. Plan ahead. Have your container. Put some water in it. Walk 70 paces away, wash them over there, pour the water out over there, don't pour it back into the stream. Because even the eco-friendly soaps can affect the ecosystem of the stream that you pour it into. Then there's campfires. And I I think all of us love to sit around the campfire at night after we've hiked or backpacked or whatever it is we've done all day, kayaked, canoed. Sitting around the campfire is great fun. And lots of places that you stay will have um, fire rings. And this is wonderful. If you have a preset fire ring, use it. Don't build great big fires. 
don't try to burn your trash in the fire most of it doesn't burn completely and it's just going to stay in that fire ring and especially in the back country somebody eventually has to clean that out and pack it out so it's your trash pack it in pack it out if you don't have a fire ring that is preset in the campsite you're staying in then you need to be aware of the regulations about where you are some places you can't have fires because there's a too much of a danger that that will spark another fire some places you can't have fires because of the ecosystem you're in it's too damaging to the plants that might be on the ground there are ways to have a fire if you don't have a preset fire ring and it is allowed in the area where you are and minimize your impact there are things called fire pans that you can put down to build your fire in and you want to make sure you do it on a durable surface like rocky ground or sandy ground somewhere that the heat from this pan isn't going to damage what's underneath it you also need to know what the recommendations are where you are about how to dispose of what's left in the fire pan after the ash or charcoal after you get done with your fire and always always make sure your fire is out once you are not sitting around it enjoying it anymore put it completely out you can put water on it if it's available you can put sandy dirt on it But make sure that you put it out. And before you walk away from your campsite, say you've camped, enjoyed the campfire the night before, the next morning when you're going to leave, that fire's not out until it's cold. If you can lay your hand on it, then it's out. The other thing is, what are you going to use for fuel for your fire? In most areas, it's not a good idea, and a lot of places not allowed, to bring fireplace, firewood from one place to another. The reason being that you often carry um, insects and other things that might be invasive species from one area to another. what is allowed where you are going to be building this fire as far as gathering firewood in the environment are you allowed to pick up downed limbs and branches in the campsite never cut down live trees in a natural area for firewood or dead trees I don't know of anywhere where you can cut firewood at all. Some places will let you use um, sticks and branches that are laying around on the ground. But all that dead wood also has a role in the environment. It rots, it adds to the soil, it's home for insects, which are then food for other animals. So the dead wood has a role to play. So we don't want to use it all up just because we like looking at fires the other thing is we all love 
to hike and camp and get to see animals. It's one of the great things about being out in the wild is to see wildlife. But at the same time, we must remember that wildlife is wild. So give them some space. You're, you're in their house. So respect their privacy. Give them some space. Some animals don't seem to notice you too much, especially if you're in an area that's frequented by people, things like chipmunks or squirrels. But you can still have an impact on those animals. Um, part of the reason they don't seem to notice you so much is because people feed them, which is not a good idea uh, for several reasons. If you feed them and they get dependent on humans to bring them food, then they that affects their natural diet and can be unhealthy for them. We don't eat things that are healthy for us, let alone healthy for other animals. But it's much more interesting to watch an animal being itself. So if you get a chance to watch an animal from a distance, great things are binoculars and telephoto lenses on cameras because we can watch up close without being up close and let them have their space and still get to see them. And some animals you should give more space to than others. And there will often be recommendations in the area where you're going to be about how much space to give to larger animals, such as elk or bison or deer. And then again, even more space for things like bears or mountain lions. So plan ahead, know where you're going, know the animals you might interact with. Not just so that you'll know what to look for and what to see, but so you'll know how to handle those animals if you do get to see them. How far back should I stay? And learn to know the signs they will give you when you, you're in their space and you need to back off. So in summary, just think about it as though you were going in to someone else's house when you go into nature. Because you are. Lots of animals live out there. It's their home. Nobody likes rowdy, messy, rude people coming to their house. So when you go down into nature, don't be rowdy, messy, and rude. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And thank you. If you have any suggestions for future videos, I'd like to hear those as well.